I'll just find out where the other one is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <sighs> so, uh, first day at work, I'm sweating, it's, uh, it's hot, uh, it's crazy to be here after spending so much time, of course, reading about it in the news, you know, to be on site and behind that door well, there is no door behind that invisible door, uh, is uh, probably one of the world's worst viruses in terms of what it does and how it kills people and how quickly it kills people. Um, you know, but it's what you train for. Um, I'm quite lucky. I trained in both America with the CDC and out in uh, Geneva with the uh, IFRC, uh, Red Cross, so to speak. and. Um, yeah it's uh it's that training that will hopefully keep me safe in there you know there's uh there's not many words that can describe how i'm feeling now there's a bit of anxiety a bit of uh you know intrepidation but you know i'm here to help in any way i can um and i think that's most important really um yeah strange to think how far i've come in the last couple of days you know from the uk could be a comfortable sofa dweller uh, watching my evening program and schedule but uh, I'm not much of a man uh, for watching TV so uh, yeah here I am on the ground So I had a fairly intense arrival here. I uh, came to uh, to put my bags down. Within half an hour, an hour, I was being taken out to the unit, which is about 30 minutes from here. And uh, having just arrived to Kenema, went straight over to the Ebola treatment unit, where I, um, yeah, I, I, I sat for a while. I think an experience I'll never forget is as I went into the unit, was left uh, following a very brief uh, orientation. I, uh, I just sat at the fence uh, and it's an open fence about two meters uh, across where you can uh, talk and interact with uh, Ebola positive patients, those suffering from the infection, um, which is very handy actually. Of course, you can pass things as well, but they must be done in an appropriate way and only one way, not back. So you can pass to them, they can't pass back. I sat down on a bench uh, and watched a lady, um, probably about 25 years old, taking uh, her last breaths in life. As a doctor, I'm well trained to, uh, to observe people through life and through death, look for signs. And as a previous intensive care and anaesthetics trainee, I, uh, I came you know, through units where we were, we were treating people uh, with their last, you know, with our, our, our last hope of medications. Um, who were taking their last breaths and so I sat there in front of uh, this lady and uh, that was probably my first introduction to viral hemorrhagic fevers in in Africa and certainly that was the first real case I'd seen in my life um, she shortly passed away just as the uh, sunset that evening so um, yeah it was quite a uh, quite quite a rotten experience really but that was uh, what I was expecting on the basis that this isn't a uh, uh, a virus that forgives uh, you know many and uh, a lot a lot of people have died um, it's torn communities and families apart uh, yeah but challenging <laughs> 